The Northern Territory Government this week extended alcohol restrictions in Alice Springs indefinitely. The restrictions see a total ban on takeaway liquor sales every Monday and Tuesday. To discuss this, I'm joined by independent Alice Springs MLA, Robin Lamley. Robin, thanks for your time. Do you support what the government's done here? Well, it's a case of having to support it, Matt. Um, people will know that Alice Springs has been uh, under siege by alcohol um, for, for a very long time. So uh, uh, we've had to endure this rather extreme alcohol restriction, having no alcohol, takeaway alcohol sales for Monday and Tuesday since February. And uh, given that things have started to turn around slightly, we feel that there's no alternative. We have to continue this, uh, this rather extreme strategy. Well, the Chief Minister's talking about significant drops in things like domestic violence since uh, these restrictions were brought in, uh, as you say, in February. Is that what you're seeing on the ground? Are you seeing things improve? We are seeing things improve, Matt, but you have to look at the or consider the context to uh, when this decision was made and the gravity of the, this decision at the time. And, and that is that we've had probably five years of, of deteriorating law and order in Alice Springs. And it culminated at the beginning of the year in January when things got so bad in Alice Springs, mainly because of the, uh, the lifting of alcohol bans across more than 400 Aboriginal living areas and town camps, uh, that uh, the Prime Minister had to drop into town and basically tell the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory to wake up to herself and put those alcohol bans bans back in place and start addressing this serious problem that uh, has been quite ongoing in Alice Springs for many years that the government, the Northern Territory Labor government chose to ignore for, for, for far too long. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned those bans in the town camps and, and the smaller uh, Aboriginal communities because when I interviewed the Chief Minister on Thursday, uh, she said that she was still open to having alcohol uh, return to some of those places if they could put together an alcohol management plan and have uh, the majority of residents in those places support the return of liquor. Uh, what do you think about the prospect of, return, of, of alcohol returning uh, to some of those communities or more specifically to, to Alice Springs town camps? Well, thanks to the, the Northern Territory Chief Minister, we now have evidence that this will surmount to a monumental disaster, which is what we saw in January. The, the Chief Minister allowed those alcohol restrictions to lift after those communities and town camps being dry for more than 15 years. And thanks to the Chief Minister, from July of last year to February of this year, uh, we saw total chaos and carnage. So for the Chief Minister to talk about having those alcohol restrictions lifted again is paramount to negligence. And I think uh, she is only contributing to the misery of people in Central Australia. It, it's We now have proof that those restrictions must stay in place. When, when uh, she refused to uh, reinstate them um, at the end of last year, from July to, to when um, the Prime Minister came to town, she was saying that uh, th this policy of um, having alcohol restrictions in Aboriginal communities was a race based policy. And that was uh, despite the fact that you had Aboriginal leaders right across the country, not just across the Northern Territory, saying they have to be put back in place because women and children were being uh, abused and uh, uh, subjected to horrific levels of alcohol fueled violence. So for the Chief Minister to start talking about uh, lifting those bans under any circumstance, Matt, is just uh, paramount to negligence and the worst possible policy that you could uh, contemplate at this point uh, in, in Central Australia and indeed, uh, more broadly speaking, in the Northern Territory. Alcohol is our biggest problem. It always has been. And this government has taken their eye off the ball for years and now they're trying to fix a problem that they are fully responsible for creating.
Well, you talk about the impact of that decision to lift those alcohol bans uh, in July last year. We saw more evidence of that uh, in data that was uh, produced in response to questions in the Estimates Committee uh, a few weeks ago. That uh, response was given this week. More than 7,000 uh, instances where police in Alice Springs responded to domestic violence call-outs from July to December last year. More than 1,000 incidents a month that police were responding to in Alice Springs alone. Um, do you think that it was uh, the the lifting of those bans only that has seen these things get so much worse? Or when you talk about things deteriorating for five years, uh, are there other factors here that have led to the situation that the whole country is now seen playing out on the ground in Alice Springs? Well, the lifting of the Stronger Future alcohol bans back in July was the icing on the cake. That was the final nail in the coffin for law and order in Central Australia. But what we saw preceding that was a significant decline in law and order, an increase in crime year on year for at least four to five years under this Northern Territory Labor government. They denied it was happening. They denied the evidence that was put in front of them every month. The Northern Territory police crime statistics showed that Crime was increasing. And uh, what we have in the Northern Territory is a Darwin-centric Labor government that really has no interest outside of Darwin. All the money goes to Darwin. Uh, all the, um, the infrastructure, all the big spending goes on in Darwin. Anything outside of Darwin is an inconvenience. And what we saw uh, for, the, for the five years, essentially from 2018 through to now, and, and God forbid, we're still facing a crisis, Matt. I mean, things have slightly uh, improved, uh, but we are still in the midst of a crime crisis like we've never seen before. I think the fact that things have slightly increased uh, or, or improved, sorry, um, has, uh, has taken um, the emphasis on the fact that uh, we've seen this decline over such a significant period. Um, and that decline over five, uh, five years or more was um, in part due to um, the Royal Commission into Juvenile uh, Detention and Child Protection that was undertaken in 2017 as a result of the Don Dale uh, revelations, the fact that uh, young people were being mistreated in juvenile detention. The recommendations from that Royal Commission led to a total relaxation in how uh, youth crime has been managed in the Northern Territory. There are no boundaries uh, and there are no consequences pretty much for children and young people that are offending. We don't know uh, exactly what the penalties are apart from if they end up in juvenile detention. And we know that uh, our juvenile detention centres, one in Alice Springs and one in Darwin, have been full uh, for years because of this um, deterioration uh, in, um, in the behaviour of young certain groups of young people uh, and this sort of uh, general soft on crime relaxation of... Um, of expectations uh, by this government. I, I think if it's like with any children, our own children and children on the street, if you don't give them parameters, if you don't give them clear um, messaging around expectations and appropriate behaviour, this is what you end up with. And Alice Springs has borne the brunt of that. Youth crime uh, was just completely out of control by the time Anthony Albanese arrived on our doorstep in, in January. Uh, and this is because of this negligence by the Northern Territory Government, their lack of uh, willingness to even contemplate that crime was deteriorating so badly in Alice Springs. And then to cap it off, the Stronger Futures uh, alcohol bans were lifted in July of last year. The Northern Territory Government said, oh, this is a race-based policy. We can't, uh, we can't um, have those restrictions in place and all hell broke loose. So um, this is where we're at at the moment in Alice Springs. There's been a slight improvement. Yes, it's significant. Any uh, improvement on where we've been, Matt, has to be significant, but we've still got a hell of a long way to go. Uh, and this government has literally been dragged screaming and kicking the whole way.
in, in a state of denial and, uh, and, a, and having a complete lack of willingness to think any, anywhere south of Darwin, pretty much. Well, we will see another one of the recommendations from that Royal Commission implemented in a couple of weeks when the Northern Territory raises the age of criminal responsibility. Robin Lamley, thanks so much for joining us from Alice Springs today. My pleasure, Matt.